rejected all of my guests. Alhamdulillah, over the course of the past few hours, we have all been privileged to hear the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to truly appreciate the glorious words, deeds of our Honorable Prophet, it is only prudent to discuss some of the people, these, these great luminaries, these great men who spend their entire life collating the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and one such individual is Imam Abu Dawood. He was a scholar of great repute. He had spent many years in the learning and teaching of the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We will learn a bit about him before we discuss some of the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So we have a true appreciation of what has gone, what sort of efforts have taken place in collating these ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When we refer to the sources regarding his lineage and his line of descent, we will learn that his kunya, his title, is Abu Dawood. His full name is Suleiman bin al Ashas bin Ishaq bin Bashir bin Shaddad bin Umar bin al Azdi al Sijistani. Azd is an attribution to a tribe in Yemen, and Sijistani is an Arabic version of the word Sistan, which is a city in the outskirts of Khurasan, to where the attribution is. That is why Imam Abu Dawood rahmatullahi alayhi also is known as Khurasani. The great Imam was born in the year 202 Hijri in Sijistan. His pursuit of knowledge took him to several places including Egypt, Hijaz, Iraq, Syria. This was one of the characteristics and special features of the scholars of the earlier days where they would travel far and wide for the pursuit of knowledge, especially the knowledge of hadith. We would find certain scholars just traveling for days on end just for the sake of one hadith. In comparison to our era, we have all the knowledge available to us. Now today in this modern era, we have it all electronically preserved on database, but we do not have the same ability, we do not have that same zeal that these people had who would travel far and wide for the pursuit of knowledge and especially the knowledge uh, of hadith. Imam Abu Dawood, so he traveled to many places and Baghdad was a place that he visited many times where he decided to settle. Towards the latter stages of his life, the Amir of Basra, he came to him and he requested him very humbly uh, to leave Baghdad and join Basra and live in Basra uh, for the rest of his days. And he put three special requests to him. He said, please come to Basra so that we can benefit from your knowledge. And not only we can benefit, but the rest of the people from far and wide can come and benefit from your knowledge. The second request that he put was that I want you to teach the Sunan, the Sunan of Abi Dawood, which is in front of us at this moment. I want you to teach this uh, to my, my, my children. And the third request was that I would like you to teach them separately from the rest. Imam Abu Dawood, rahmatullahi alayhi, agreed the first two proposals, but he rejected the last proposal where 
he requested that there would be a separate gathering and majlis for um, his son. So this is what happened. Imam Abu Dawood, rahmatullahi alayhi, he went to um, Basra uh, and there he spent his, uh, um, the, the, the last part of his life and he died in the year 275 uh, Hijri. It was a Friday and it was the 16th of Shawwal and he was buried next to the renowned scholar Sufyan Sauri, rahmatullahi alayhi. To appreciate uh, an individual, you have to uh, make an assessment based on that person's teachers and students. The same case is with Imam Abu Dawud, rahmatullahi alayhi. Ibn Hajar Asqalani, rahmatullahi alayhi, a great hadith scholar, has listed approximately 300 students, 300 teachers of Abu Dawud. And none of the um, compilers uh, of the ahadith, the well-known uh, six compi uh, compilers, uh, excluding him, there will be five, none of them uh, were his teachers. However, uh, he had some teachers of great repute, amongst which was Ahmad ibn Hanbal, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, who he stayed with uh, for a long period of time. Not only that, uh, Imam Abu Dawud, rahmatullahi alayhi, had the privilege of transmitting a hadith to uh, Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahmatullahi alayhi, who in turn uh, would then become the student uh, of Abu Dawood rahmatullahi So although he was a student, he had the privilege uh, of transmitting a hadith to him which would make Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahmatullahi alayhi his teacher as well. And he took great pride in this fact. Ahmad ibn Hanbal also uh, was, um, uh, was very um, uh, fortunate in, in having this hadith transmitted uh, and he also with great care and precision, as soon as he heard this hadith, he, he, trend, uh, he had it written down uh, and he advised uh, other people to do so as well. When we look at, at his students, uh, some are of the opinion that he had hundreds and thousands of students. Uh, uh, the most uh, notable we have just uh, mentioned, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, but also we have Imam uh, Tirmidhi and Imam Nasai uh, that were students of Imam Abu Dawood. We learn about Tirmidhi, uh, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, that he transmitted according to uh, one opinion, two hadith uh, in his sunan, and according to another opinion, four hadith in his sunan, uh, the sunan of uh, Tirmidhi. In relation to Nasai rahmatullah alayhi, it is uh, a well-known fact that uh, he was a student of uh, Imam Abu Dawud rahmatullah alayhi, but opinions are divided as to whether uh, his transmissions are to be found in his well-known work, the Sunan of Nasai. The reason why there is this confusion is because there is another uh, Abu Dawud that uh, Nasai rahmatullah alayhi constantly transmits from. His name is also Abu Dawood and Sulaiman, uh, same as uh, our Abu Dawood, rahmatullah alayhi, uh, Abu Dawood Sulaiman bin Saif al-Harrani. However, he doesn't mention his name uh, in full all the times. Uh, sometimes he just mentions Abu Dawood, and therefore Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahmatullahi alayhi, and other uh, scholars of great repute uh, have said that when he just mentions Abu Dawood, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, that is none other than Abu Dawood uh, al-Sijistani al-Khurasani. Another distinguishing feature of Abu Dawood rahmatullahi alayhi that he had a very strong juristic uh, position and he was very well renowned uh, for his inclination towards fiqh uh, and jurisprudence. That is why Shirazi rahmatullahi alayhi has included Imam Abu Dawood rahmatullahi alayhi in his well-known work, Tabaqatul Fuqaha, the ranks uh, of the jurists. Uh, in his work, he has compiled legal ahadith in such a meticulous uh, and precise way that you cannot find this uh, in any other uh, works uh, amongst the six. Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi alayhi has gone to the extent uh, that uh, he says in the science of hadith, this particular book, the Sunan of Abu Dawood, uh, is sufficient for a mujtahid. Uh, 